All right, you guys, biscuits and scones. I know we've done this before, so it'll be um, kind of quick. So I'm gonna do biscuits first. You guys either are gonna cut them out with a biscuit cutter, if you have a biscuit cutter at home, or you can use like a knife or a um, sharp cutter, whatever you have. So four biscuits, it's all purpose flour. Um, baking powder is your leavener along with butter, um, salt, and that's it. So flour, baking powder, salt, sugar. Sugar is what's gonna help it caramelize. So butter cutter or uh, butter grater, cheese grater. Uh, so the large holes of the cheese grater. And then this one calls for three ounces of butter. So three ounces of butter. So you guys can do some fun stuff with this if you want to. You can add like a quarter cup or so of grated cheese. I had grated cheese, I don't know what happened to it. It's probably sitting on my counter at home. Um, you can add some spices to it. So if you wanted to do like some garlic powder, um, some ancho chili powder, start with just like, um, I don't know, quarter teaspoon measurements and then kind of play with it from there. Uh, too much can be kind of a lot. People really like black pepper biscuits. You could do those. You could do some like uh, cheddar cheese and black pepper biscuits would be really good. Uh, roll this butter around in your flour and it won't, um, it won't grate your fingers as easily. And then remember, once you get all the butter grated, tap it on the side of the pan or the bowl, um, and you're gonna use it for your scones. So just fluff it up. You just want the butter um, coated in that flour and those dry ingredients. Sift your dry ingredients. Uh, make sure to do that before you add your butter to it. So once the butter is coated in the flour and there's no huge lumps of it, then you can add your half and half uh, or your milk, sorry. Add about three quarters, leave about two tablespoons of your um, milk off to the side. We don't, remember, we don't wanna add too much of that. Uh, we don't wanna make them sticky, because then they're gonna be harder to roll out. So when you guys are mixing these, you're gonna kind of push it together to knead it. And you can kind of, once it starts to come together, kind of pick it up and push it over itself. And all we're doing, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more milk, but it's still gonna leave a couple tablespoons in the bottom of the pan. So, pick it up, push it over, and then when it comes together, or when it's almost together even, um, then you can put it out onto your table and knead it a few more times there. So I would say, once it's all together, knead it an additional five times and you'll be good to go. So we don't wanna overwork this. So overworked biscuits are gonna end up being really tough. Um, we want to still have that lamination. So this is almost all together. I'm gonna get this stuff off of my hands. You can just do this and press it in there and then I'm gonna knead it five more times. So one, two, Okay, so now I'm gonna press it out. I like to press it out. I'm gonna put a little bit of dusting flour down on the table. Not too much, just a little bit. And then you can take a rolling pin and you wanna roll it to an inch, to a knuckle, remember? So I kinda press it in like this and then I'll roll it. So you don't want it much thinner than a knuckle, okay? Um, then you have more crackers than biscuits. So from here, you can use a biscuit cutter. So if you're using a biscuit cutter, if you have a biscuit cutter, put it down on there and cut straight down. Um, if you're using a knife, and then remember, you're gonna flip them. So you're gonna cut it and then you're gonna flip them because then you won't have the compressed layers at the bottom. We'll talk about that in class. Um, if you're gonna cut it, you can use, use something sharp like a knife. I have this butter cutter here, but um, it just make like, like size biscuits. Remember, if it looks the same, then it'll cook the same. So you can just make squared off biscuits. Um, I'm just gonna keep using this so that mine are all the same, uh, so they cook the same. So I cut it, I'm gonna flip it. So once you get to the end, you can re-roll it. So pull those pieces back together and then knead it five times again. That'll just help it stick together. And then 
one inch and I try to do it so I can get the most out of it. So I'll do it like, oh, I know that it's that thin. So then I can get one, two more out of it, flip them over, and then I'll just make one, one ugly biscuit for me to eat. Or you can roll it out and try to make one more kind of funky looking one. And then with the scraps, just make a little guy. So then once those are done, you'll brush them with half and half. I'm gonna show you guys scones really quick too. Four scones, you can add like dried fruit. So same ingredients. So flour, baking powder, um, baking powder, not soda, remember that. Baking powder, salt, and more sugar. So scones are sweeter, they have more sugar in them. So I'm using four ounces of butter in this one and then we're also using half and half. So scones are also richer. Um, so but also same side, large side of the cheese grater, sifter dry ingredients first. Um, and then I have my half and half sitting here. So you could do dried fruit, you could do, um, you could do fresh fruit. Um, as long as you're really careful, um, like fresh blueberries, you can kind of work with them. They burst though, which is, uh, and they'll make your dough blue uh, if you're not really, really careful with them. Um, you can do like fruit on top. So you can make your scone dough and then press fresh fruit into the top. You want to press it into the dough. Um, today, I'm going to show you guys how to do jam ones. So put jam in them. So grab all that butter out. And then remember, fluff it up just so it's coated. Or the butter is coated in that um, those dry ingredients. And then you're going to add half and half. Remember, add about, I don't know, I would say... Hmm, somebody's hair. Gross. I would say about three quarters of your half and half. And then... You're gonna start pressing it together. So that was pretty good guess on the half and half. So both of these have about, I don't know, a tablespoon extra of liquid in there. It also is raining outside, so there's more moisture in the air. Um, so think about that too. You have it available, but you might not need it all. So hold off on it. Um, okay. And you can also use the extra to brush the tops of your scones and biscuits. So it's almost all together. Put it out on the table and I'm gonna knead it, uh, I don't know, five to seven times, just till it feels right. Once it, I like to do it until it starts to almost stick to the table till you know that the butter is getting kind of warm and then I'll stop. Okay, so I am gonna call that a day. So it's nice, um, I can still see the butter chunks, um, but it's starting to get a little tacky, so I think that's good. I'm gonna get a little bit of flour out on the table. Um, and I am going to try my best at a circle. So just a little half, or sorry, quarter turns, kind of like you guys did for your pie dough. And then I'll just kind of round it out as I'm going. So quarter turns, quarter turns. I'm gonna use my butter cutter on this. So you can do two ways. You can completely cut the scones or you can leave them together um, and just make like marks in them. I'm gonna completely cut it. Um, so it's in portions, but it's gonna be like a pie. Okay, so one inch, rounded off circle. Um, so I'm gonna cut them right off the bat. So find your half, cut straight down and then I'm gonna go cut it into quarters. The cutest little scones. And then I'm gonna put them on my tray. And I'm gonna brush everything with half and half. With the scones, if you wanted to, you could do, um, sprinkle a little sugar on there. You can do white sugar, you can do um, 
I like that sugar in the raw, like what you get at um, like Starbucks or whatever. So you can brush your biscuits too. Or if you did this, it's you're gonna do biscuits or scones. So I'm gonna brush my biscuits. Um, so then I have just raspberry preserves that I bought at the store. So I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna make a little hole in there for my jam. So I'm just kind of twisting it around. It doesn't work very well if you have nails, which I don't, but um, just be mindful of that. So you're just gonna make like a little divot in there for your jam to hide in. I have all my little holes. I'm just going to take a spoon and I'm going to spoon jam into there. So these will cook. Um, they're all about the same size. So if you decide you want extra credit and you're going to do both, um, make sure if you're going to cook them both on the same tray. Make sure they're the same size. So these are relatively the same size. So I'm going to cook them on the same tray. But um, if you're making like ginormous biscuits and this size scone, they won't cook. So you'll need to do two different. Um, trays. Okay, so 375 until the edges start caramelizing. Um, it'll take about 15 to 20 minutes, and I'll show you when they're done. Boom. Okay, guys, biscuits and scones are out. So see, nice lamination. Didn't overwork them. Check those babies out. The jammy jams in the middle. Aren't those adorbs?